Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to rank five Nikon digital cameras from one to five for high ISO noise. And normally when I do something like this, I'll go through all my test procedures and show some results and then give you my rankings. Well, this I'm gonna start off a little differently. I'm gonna give you the rankings right up front. So the five cameras that I tested uh, were the Nikon D7100, which is a um, 24 megapixel crop sensor camera. The Nikon D500, which is a 20 megapixel crop sensor camera and the Nikon D810, which is a full-frame 36 megapixel camera. Also, the Nikon Z7, which is a 45 megapixel full-frame camera. And finally, the Nikon Z6, which is a 24 megapixel full-frame camera. So just to cut to the chase and to give you the results right up front, and then I'll explain my test procedure, uh, the Z6 came in number one, had the best high ISO. Next was the Z7, followed closely by the D810, and then the D500, and finally in last place was the 7100. Now that's not to be unexpected. The D7100 was introduced in February of 2013. The D810 came out in July of 14, the D500 in January of 16, and then the Z7 and Z6 were introduced in uh, August and November of 2018. Generally, a full-frame camera is going to give you better high ISO noise results than a crop sensor camera. Uh, a big factor in noise is pixel pitch. And uh, let me just go through the pixel pitch on each of these cameras. Um, on the Z6, it's 5.92, which is the highest of them all, and the Z6 had the best high ISO noise. Next, however, was the uh, D810 which was 4.87, and these are measured in microns, okay? Um, then was the Z7 at 4.34, but I found that the Z7 had slightly less noise than the D810. Well, these cameras are four years apart. Uh, the D810 came out in 14, and the um, Z7 came out in 18, so technology uh, improves. Uh, so it's not just pixel pitch, okay? And it's not just a full-frame camera over a DX camera or a crop sensor camera in every case. Newer cameras make improvements in other areas related to noise as well. So uh, just continuing that, the D500 has a 4.2 pixel pitch and the lowest of them all is the D7100 at 3.9. So in my test, the cameras that had the higher pixel pitch, for the most part, other than the D810, had better high ISO noise. So uh, how big a difference was it? Well, the D810 and the Z7 were very close. The Z7, slightly better. Uh, the Z6, about a stop, I would say, better than the Z7. Uh, and those of us that have come from film, uh, you know, who were shooting Tri-X back in the 70s and then pushing it to 800, and then Kodak came out with T-Max 3200, uh, I mean, that was very grainy film. And to see the results that you can get today at these high ISOs. I mean, the Z6 at 12,800, it's just remarkable uh, the quality 
of these images. Now, one thing I noticed with the Z7 over all the other cameras, actually, and it, it makes sense, is sharpness. And uh, even as we get into these higher ISOs, for the most part, the Z7 produced a sharper image, even though it had more noise than, let's say, the Z6. So let me just explain my test setup. I use two LED lights, same lights that are uh, focused on me right now, uh, set for 3200 degrees Kelvin, okay? Uh, the, the equivalent, uh, cl close to the equivalent of an incandescent light bulb. Uh, the cameras, all the cameras were set exactly the same way using the same lens. I used a 24 to 120 F mount Nikkor lens. On the full frame cameras, it was set to 75 millimeter. And on the DX cameras, the crop sensor cameras, which give you a 1.5 multiplication factor, uh, it was set to 50 millimeters. Uh, so that would give me the same size image. As far as white balance, I just dialed into each of the cameras 3200 degrees Kelvin. Okay, the lens was set at 5.6 for each image, and the shutter speed was varied, obviously, depending on the uh, ISO. And I shot at 800, 1600, 3200, 6400 and 12,800 on each of the cameras, just shooting one frame of each. I shot fine JPEG on each of the cameras, and the picture control was set to neutral. Okay, uh, once the images were shot, I brought them into Photoshop, and I resized them all to the size of the smallest image. Now, the um, D500 produces the smallest image, it's a 20 megapixel crop sensor camera. So I sized each of the other images from the other four cameras so that they would all be the same size for comparison purposes. I wasn't surprised by the test results. I have used the Z6 at 12,800 on several occasions, 6,400 as well and I was very, very impressed with this high ISO quality. Oh, one more thing. Each of the cameras also was set to low for high ISO noise reduction in camera. I didn't want to turn it off completely uh, because I wanted to come close to uh, how it, the camera would be used in an actual picture-taking situation. So I kept it on low. The important thing was to be consistent from camera to camera. One of the things in this testing that was really impressive to me was an eight-year-old D810 really held up well at high ISO. The D Z6 was probably about a stop to a stop and a half better in high ISO. And um, I thought that was, you know, really great. Um, the Z7 was just a little bit better than the DA-10 in high ISO. And uh, another thing, as you increase the ISO, uh, sharpness. You're going to lose some sharpness in, in many cases. And uh, the Z7, again, not surprisingly, because it had the highest megapixel count, uh, offered the sharpest images uh, across the board. One other thing, uh, my exposures uh, were all the same for each of the cameras, and uh, it was metered with an incident light meter. Um, if you underexpose and have to pull that image back up, either in your raw converter or if you shoot JPEG in uh, Photoshop, the noise is going to increase you know, especially in the shadow areas. So uh, if you're looking to get the highest quality in high ISO images, just try to, um, you know, expose correctly. So let me just go over my conclusion again. Uh, for high ISO, out of these five cameras, the Nikon Z6 came in first, the Z7 second, about a stop. The Z6 was about a stop better uh, maybe slightly more than a stop better than the Z7. 
Next was the D810, which was very close to the Z7. I would say at the higher ISOs, maybe about a half a stop difference. At the lower ISOs, again, at 800 and all these cameras, they all look great, uh, even 1600. Um, at, uh, next, we have the uh, D500, and finally, the 7100. I think the 7100, uh, even though it came in fifth, uh, put in a very respectable performance considering it's a camera from 2013. Now, I recently did a video on the 7100, so I will put a link in the description below. I will also put a link to my uh, long-term, my what I called my short long-term review of the uh, DA10. So there'll be a link below to that. And uh, I'd like to know what you think, what your conclusions are, those of you who have uh, you know, shot with these mirrorless cameras or the older DSLRs. Now, I don't have a, a, a D850. I didn't have a D850 to test, but the sensor in the Z7 is very similar, if not the same, as the um, D850, so I think the results would be um, similar. So again, if, uh, if you've run some tests on this, if, uh, I'd like to hear from you and see what your conclusions were. And um, I guess that's it for this video. I uh, usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and tap that bell so you'll be alerted anytime I come out with a new video. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.